What we're going to be discussing today is the total internal energy of a gas. Now, what is total internal energy? In order to answer that question, let's think of a really simple system. So imagine we have two molecules um, over here, and those two molecules are in some sort of motion with respect to each other. They could be part of a solid, it could be part of a gas, or they could be part of a, uh, uh, of a liquid. It doesn't really matter. Now, um, the total internal energy of that system is going to be the sum of the randomly distributed kinetic energies and potential energies of all the particles in the system. So, if that means that if we have um, those two particles, each of them is going to have some potential energy and each of them is going to have some kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is just given by a half mv squared. The potential energy, um, that actually depends on distance and uh, the further away two particles are, the greater their potential energy. You can kind of think about it as their potential to, uh, to do work. So if two particles are quite far apart and they attract each other, by the time this particle goes here, it will have done quite a lot of work or uh, a lot of work is required to be done. Uh, however, if the particle is over here, then the potential energy will probably not be as much, and that is because um, if it gets attracted, it won't do as much work. But just to summarize, the um, total internal energy is usually given the symbol U. So this is going to be potential energy plus kinetic energy. However, it is, it's really important to know that that is the sum of um, all the particles potential energies plus all of the particles kinetic energies. Okay folks, now let's have a look at an example question for internal energy. I'm going to look at an example which is the melting of ice. Before we actually look at the question though, why does ice melt to begin with? Well, if we imagine a little ice cube that I've drawn over here and all of the air particles around it. Of course, this is not drawn to scale. The air particles are considerably smaller than the actual ice cubes, so hence they're invisible. But if we imagine each of them colliding with the walls of the ice cube, if we increase the temperature of the air, well, that means that all of those particles are going to be moving faster and faster and they're going to be transferring more and more momentum onto the walls, of, onto the lattice structure of the ice. This is what actually causes the transition from ice to water or from a solid to a liquid. It's, uh, it's those collisions which change the substance by transferring more energy. Well, let's have a look at a question about this. So, what happens to the internal energy of this substance in each of the regions of the graph? Let's examine. We have on the y-axis, we've got temperature and we've got time on the x-axis. This is quite a typical OCR exam question. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be about eyes. It could be about a different substance. However, if you see this shape of a graph, chances are the, the answer to this question is going to be remarkably similar to what I'm doing at the moment. Well, we can see that we actually start at about negative 40 degrees over here and initially we've got ice which is heating up. This is our region number one, this first bit of the graph. Straight after that we move on to region two which is ice plus water and this is when the substance is actually melting. It never ceases to amaze me how that during the melting process the temperature remains absolutely constant and all of that energy goes into increasing the potential energy of those molecules essentially transforming the ice to water. Region number three, we have water, which is heating up. We reach the boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius, and then we've got a, um, a boiling uh, water plus, plus steam. And finally, in region number five, we have some steam. Okay, well, let's examine the question. It's asking us what happens to the internal 
energy of the substance. Well, the internal energy is the sum of the randomly distributed potential energies and kinetic energies of all the particles in the system. So to answer what happens to the internal energy, we need to answer what happens to the kinetic energy and what happens to the potential energy of the particles. Let's get started with region number one. Okay, well, as we can see in region number one, we've got quite a steep gradient, and that indicates that the temperature has increased from negative 40 to zero degrees Celsius. Well, if that's the case, that means that the kinetic energy must have increased as well because the temperature has increased. So for region number one, I'm going to write down that the kinetic energy is increasing. So the kinetic energy is increasing. What happens to potential energy? That remains almost constant. It's increasing by a small amount. So let me just write this down. I'm going to explain it. So the potential energy is increasing by a small amount. And I'm going to underline small by a small amount. The reason for this small amount of increase is um, because that's dependent on the distance between the actual molecules and as the kinetic energy is increasing, their vibrations have a larger amplitude. So the potential energy increases because of that by essentially a negligible amount. But on an exam question, we could just write down by a small amount. Okay, well, region number two, um, for that case, we've got ice plus water. Well, you can see first of all that the temperature remains constant at zero degrees. If that's the case, we know that the kinetic energy has got to be constant as well. So for region number two, we can just write that the kinetic energy is constant. So where is all that energy going? It has to be going to potential energy because those are the only two energies involved in this system. So the potential energy has got to be increasing. So potential energy is increasing. Hopefully you guys are getting the hang of this. Now, number three, region number three, we just have water. Notice, by the way, that the gradient of region number three is a little bit less steep compared to region number one. This is because of the relative specific heat capacities of those two substances. And it's something that if we're asked to draw this curve in an exam will be important. So if you have to draw this graph in an exam, make sure to draw region number three a little bit less steep compared to region number one. Okay, well, let's answer what's happening to the kinetic energies and potential energies in region number three. So once again, the curve is, uh, or the line is going upwards. So that means that the temperature is increasing. So the kinetic energy has got to be increasing as well. So Ke is increasing like so. And in exactly the same way, we can also say that the potential energy is increasing by a small amount. So PE is increasing by a small amount. Just create a little bit more space over here. So P potential energy is increasing by a small amount. Perfect. Um, region number four. We can see that in region number four, once again, we've got a flat line. That means that we have a gradient of zero and the temperature is remaining constant. Now, if the temperature remains constant, that means that the kinetic energy is also constant. So I can just write that Ke standing for kinetic energy is constant. Remember, just for efficiency in this case, I'm using abbreviations, but please write down the full words in, uh, in an exam situation. So in region number four, while the substance is boiling, the rest of the energy has got to go to potential energy. So we can just say that the potential energy is increasing. 
So potential energy is increasing. Region number five is, uh, is quite interesting. So I'm just going to make a little note that um, let's assume that this is uh, an ideal it, because it's a steam, so it's a gas. So let's assume that it's, it is an ideal gas. Um, so I'm just going to write over here that this is an ideal gas over here. It doesn't need to be, but in this case, we're just going to assume that it is. We can see the temperature is increasing quite sharply. So that means that the kinetic energy is increasing. So the kinetic energy is increasing. However, now the potential energy has actually reached zero. We'd normally assume the potential energy to be negative, and then when it increases, it reaches zero. The reason for that is because the, the particles are really far apart in a gas. So their attraction is no longer, um, is, um, is no longer considered to be important. So an ideal gas assumes that the potential energy is zero. So I'm going to say over here that potential energy is zero. Okay, folks, so hopefully uh, this question makes sense. Um, please drop a comment down below if you'd like me to explain anything further. Now, what we're going to look at next is a real past paper question. Okay, folks, so let's apply what we have learned to a real past paper question. So this is a question from OCR Physics A, Modeling Physics, June 2017. Question 22 in particular. So the first one is to define the internal energy of a substance. Now, as we said, the internal energy is the sum of the random distribution so it's the sum of the random distribution, random distribution of the kinetic energies and potential energies. So of the kinetic energies and potential energies. of the particles in a substance or should we just say molecules in this case just let it be a little bit more accurate of its molecules perfect now one thing to consider is that we really need to mention the word molecules because we need to be as specific as possible so you may not actually get that mark unless you have mentioned the word molecules. So once again, the internal energy is the sum of the random distributions of the kinetic energies and the potential energies of all of its molecules. Okay, well, let's have a look at the part B. A block of uh, paraffin wax is melting at a constant temperature. Ooh, as soon as I read constant temperature, I know that kinetic energy is not going to be changing. Use the behavior of the molecules to describe and explain the changes to the internal energy of the molecules as the wax, as it, well, as it melts. Okay, well, perfect. So... If you remember the graph that we looked at moments before of temperature against time will actually be in this, this flat region over here on the right hand side. So this is the region where melting occurs. Okay, well, let's start off answering this question. The very first thing I'm going to say is that the kinetic energy is not changing. So my first point is going to be that the kinetic energy is not changing. And I'm going to give my reason for that. So the kinetic energy is not changing. This is because the temperature is constant. So because the temperature, the temperature is constant. Okay, perfect. Now we're still inputting some energy into the, the system. So that means that it has to go somewhere. It's not going to be in the kinetic energy. It has to go to potential energy. 
So in, uh, that means that the potential energy of the particles or the molecules of the substance will be increasing. Let's just write this out in full. So we can just say that the potential energy is increasing. So the potential energy is increasing. Notice that we still have not really answered the question per se, because it's asking us to explain the changes of the internal energy. And we know that the internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energies, which are not changing, and the sum of the potential energies. So that means that the internal energy has got to be increasing. So the internal energy is increasing. Perfect. In terms of the actual marking of, of this question, we're going to get a mark for saying that the kinetic energy is, uh, is not changing, the kinetic energy is constant, and this is because the temperature itself is constant. We get a mark for saying that the potential energy is increasing in this case, and finally we get one final mark of just putting it all together and saying that the internal energy is increasing. This is because the internal energy really is the sum of all the potential energies plus all of the kinetic energies. Just as an aside, a different way of thinking about it, uh, just to be absolutely perfectly clear, if our internal energy is U, so this is the sum of all the kinetic energies plus the sum of all of the potential energies. So let's say that our kinetic energies, those do not change, so those are equal to a constant. However, um, our potential energies increase. Well, if those guys increase, that means that the internal energy has got to increase as well. Okay guys, so hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video learning about in the internal energy of a substance. Once again, if there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you very much.